Today we are taking a look at the work of Edward Compton. Uh, the problem is there's two Edward Comptons. One is Edward Theodore Compton, the father, and the other is Edward Harrison Compton, the son. They both painted very much alike. Both worked in oil and watercolor proficiently, and both painted in the same area, same uh, subject matter, the mountain ranges in Europe, in North Africa. Edward Theodore, and this painting here is by Edward Theodore Compton, the, the father. He was born in 1884 and died in 1921, uh, was born in England, and the family moved to uh, Germany. He attended the Royal Academy of uh, Art in London. His son, Edward Harrison Compton, and this is uh, Edward Harrison Com Compton's painting, and some of these you can tell apart uh, because the, you, know, you can read the signature, for one thing, but a lot of them where there's no signature provided, uh, they really look similar, and I've seen some of the same paintings attributed to both. So that's why I just lumped them together. This looks a little bit more like a plain air piece. I imagine uh, because of the time they worked uh, small oil studies on site and drawings and then did large ones in the studio. This looks more like a studio piece. But either way, you know, the really good paintings. They both had a strong sense of design and both had the ability to paint a lot of detail but not lose the large masses or the large shapes that hold the painting together, which is the problem with detail. When we add a lot of detail to our painting, we break up those large masses that make the painting work. And their large masses, even though they have a lot of detail, like in the rocks here in the foreground or the rocks back in here in the middle ground, they still hold together. They still separate the big masses. John Carlson talks about seeing your painting in terms of big shapes, four to six shapes or four to eight shapes, and make sure you don't lose those shapes at the end with a lot of detail that they still hold together. And they don't. E either one of them, their paintings always remain real solid, even with a lot of detail. And a lot of the detail is what feels like detail is just broken color using same value but different color in a big area just to show some variation of color. I have some drawings here. I think these are by Edward Harrison, the son, but I imagine using drawings also on site and simplicity of line. Very nice, just beautiful line here, simplicity of values. And I could see working from these to work on a painting. I think they might have used photography as well, but Photography was not very good back then, so it wouldn't have been much help at all. I imagine they relied more on the uh, watercolor sketches and small oil sketches and drawings. This, I believe, is Edward Theodore, the father. Again, strong sense of light. They all capture that drama that you get in the mountains when you have strong light and shadow. Again, separating those big shapes and planes by value and then not losing that separation the more detail you add, which is usually what happens. When we get caught up in detail, we really lose that um, solid mass feel, and it becomes, becomes less solid. This is um, Edward Harrison, I'm pretty sure. Again, very simple, strong design of dark and light, a lot of contrast, a lot of detail in front, uh, which contrasts the simplicity of the trees here, the simplicity in the background and the sky. So not overly detailed, but certainly can handle detail like you can see here in the front. Although I imagine a lot of this, which has a sense of detail in, these, in this uh, bank here, is more just color variation, more the same value, but different color. And detail is value change. A lot of little small darks and lights, which it does have in there also, but good strong use of color and value to make things work. Now here's a watercolors, um, Edward Harrison, the son, and they both use watercolor very well, very proficient in both. So whether this is a studio or outdoor, who knows, but it doesn't matter. In the end result, really nice painting. They, do the same thing here, even though there's detail, the strong dark and light pattern holds up. It doesn't fall apart and become mushy. Very, very solid. 
is an example probably of the outdoor work name and kind of description scratched into the lower right. Again, a lot of color variation in the greens here in the shadowed tree and rock. Uh, but not a lot of values, two to three values with um, more color variation. So keep your value simple and vary the color quite a bit within those big simple values. Uh, but keep your values very, very simple. And it's going to read a lot, a lot better. And I don't know which one this is, but again, very strong design. Uh, keeping the trees very simple, doing some details in the trees in front. Simplicity in the trees in the middle ground and very big solid masses. When you look at a painting like this and if you can look at it in black and white and it doesn't lose much, then you know the values are correct. And color wise, you could use whatever you want uh, as long as the values are right. It's still going to carry, it's going to hold up and be easier to read. This is an example of the watercolor. Again, very nice. I like the flat areas here of the water and the uh, kind of bluish green hillside here. The simplicity there compared to the more detailed and more color variation of the hills and mountains in the background. Then the simplicity again of the cliffs and the very distant part of the painting. Not detailed everywhere. He's just picked particular areas where he wants to show or suggest some detail. Again, it's Edward Harrison Compton. You can tell because it says Harrison Compton down here. Again, simplicity, values, separating those uh, planes, the slanted mountains from the vertical trees and the flat ground. A lot of value changes within the trees and within the mountains, but they're all real close in value. So throw a lot of color in there, but keep your values fairly close and simple. Simple shapes, simple values makes color a lot easier to uh, come up with. This is a painting, uh, again, by Harrison. Most of these are by his son, Harrison Compton. Um, but maybe not uh, completed. I don't know, it looks finished to me, but you can see where the background is just simple dark and light shapes to set up the pattern of dark and light. Not much color variation or any subtlety in value. Still works, but maybe not completed. So it's nice to see these once in a while. I mean, it looks completed to me, but uh, compared to his other paintings, he would have worked with edges and a little more value change in some of those big shapes, but still works really well. I like the subtle color change here in the hillside. Harrison, the son, developed polio when he was 28 or 26, so could not uh, travel as much. And I can imagine being back then, no motorized wheelchairs made it a lot harder. I uh, don't know which one this is, can't read it. Looks like opaque watercolor. Again, the simplicity of the shapes and values makes the color read a lot better. Very simple shapes of the darkest vertical trees and then the uh, slanted planes a bit lighter and the sunlit kind of flat areas in front and in the background, the lightest. So keep your values and shapes simple. You can always do more variation in color. It's a good example of that here. The uh, uh, stronger, warmer colors in front, lighter, more muted, cooler colors in background in both the shadow and the sunlight. Um, really gives the feeling of depth and atmosphere. And that's their goal, I think, is just to suggest the light and the depth, depth and the atmosphere in their subject, which seems to be always mountain. And they did that really well. You can see the value change of the darkest dark of the tree here with the shadows in the background. Just getting that comparison, this being dark really compared to the background is what makes it work. And too often we don't compare, we just isolate a shadow or a sunlit area and we try and match that value. But you have to compare. This has to be a light shadow compared to middle ground and foreground. So careful not to isolate your values. Always compare them. This is um, Edward Harrison. Again, very strong, dramatic light, and he doesn't lose it with detail, even though he has a lot of detail here. And the color seems to be very definite. You know, orange, red, orange, uh, red, blue, green, not trying to match a photographic color or anything. The more you can pick a color from the color wheel and then adjust it, the easier it is to come up with, with color, as opposed to just trying to mix and mix 
until you match what you're looking at. Another Harrison, Edward Harrison, looks outdoor to me. Don't know if it is or not, but very nice, very strong. Again, value, simple, a lot of detail, but the big shapes still hold together. And I think this is Harrison also. Really good value changes as things recede and use of, of edges. Another Harrison Compton, cloudy day, but still strong separation. Here, the strong separation of dark and light is not in the cast shadows and sunlit areas. It's more in the big masses, the separation of the big masses of the dark trees against the big mass of the light water. Value changes in the mountains are big and simple. It's not so much the cast shadows of sunlight and shadow that create the dark and light here because it's more of a cloudy day. Now this is an Edward uh, Theodore Compton, the father, in that strong separation of background values and color temperature compared to the foreground. Really dark darks, warmer colors, lighter darks, and cooler colors in the, in the background. Good suggestion of atmosphere. Another watercolor, uh, Harrison, maybe an outdoor sketch for a bigger painting, who knows? Or just an outdoor sketch for the sake of sketching outdoors. Doesn't have to always be for a bigger painting, but you don't have a good camera, that's what you use. So, good suggestion of light. I like just the simplicity of the light on the trees here. It's just the value change in here that suggests shadow and sunlight on these trees. It's, color doesn't do it as much. It's all about the value. And again, has a sense of detail because he has some well-placed, small, little piggy details. But again, he doesn't lose that big feeling of, of the masses by cluttering up with too much detail. Again, another um, Edward Harrison Compton. Good value change, good soft edges as everything recedes because it's more cloudy, somewhat foggy day. Always real strong design on all of these too. And really good paintings to check out. They have a lot of large files of their paintings online, uh, which makes it easier to study as well.